just in the, Peter's opening address, he mentioned that how do we build the resilience of local communities? And Penny brought up an interesting subject. Um, what are solutions that are not grant dependent? Um, well, I believe the community banking model is a piece of that puzzle um, and some very viable solutions to that problem. I'll just give you some background. Um, the community banking um, works um, from this uh, foundation. That new problems are not solved with a traditional approach. The community banking is a different approach. It's a new model, um, it's an innovative model, and it's well balanced and calibrated for the future. Uh, one thing I want you to take home from today, if nothing else, is we feed into the prosperity of the local community, not from it, which is quite a significant difference to some of the other players in our industry. Um, so I'll, I'll give you the story of community banking. Um, I believe we're, we're only up to the first one or two or three chapters in the community banking story. It's the first of its kind in the world and it was born out of necessity. Um, in uh, probably about 10, 15 years ago, you probably be aware, a lot of um, banks in regional towns and metropolitan villages closed down. Um, an eloquent, eloquent speaker once said the communities um, were debranched, depleting their capacity. I reckon that's a nice way of saying it decimated communities and created hardship and difficulties for businesses and families um, and basically started the downhill slide for many communities. So as I said, we need a new model, a new approach um, to counter that problem. Bendigo Bank has a philosophy. Successful customer, successful equals a successful community and that equals a successful bank in that order. That is the difference. Um, we are a bit different, we're a bit quirky, we swim against the tide, we stand by our convictions and we don't bow to the cowardice of conformity. I'll give you a few examples. Um, the community bank model as we, um, as we do is the first uh, one in the world. Um, in Australia, we were the first bank in Australia to introduce a Visa debit card. Um, so why would a customer want to pay 20, 30% on interest to buy something? Why couldn't they use it from their own money? So we're the first to introduce a debit card to Australia. Um, uh, another interesting thing, I'll take up Michael's comment that people can't invest in a local community, but they can squander thousands of dollars in a, um, in a casino. So some of the things that we stand by, we will not put an ATM anywhere near a gaming machine. Just one of our things that we don't believe that is contributing to the success of a customer. Um, is some of the things that we're very proud of, the Westgate Bridge collapse in Melbourne quite a few years ago. Um, it was a catastrophe and there were many workers and people killed and injured in that. We are still working today with families um, that were devastated by that tragedy. Um, and we're still working with them to sustain the families. Another thing is since the GFC, 2007, um, we have had upgrades in our ratings from the agencies the ratings agency. So we're very proud of a few of those achievements and I could bore you for hours with some of the things we've done, but there's a start. So how does the community banking model work? Well, um, the nuts and bolts of it are this. The local community gets together and forms a company and they partner with Bendigo Bank to, to start a community bank. So in our example in Clovelly, 257 people put up their money and started a local bank. Um, so in essence, Bendigo Bank is a franchisee, uh, sorry, franchisor, we are the franchisee. But rather than, say, a Jack's Tyres, McDonald's Hamburgers, Glory Jeans Coffee Shop, Wendy's Super Sundays, no individual owns the bank. It is owned by the community. Um, we give 80% of our profit back to the community, and that's what I'm allowed to say, the reality of it is that um, the other 20% go back to the shareholders. So while I'm not allowed to say it, I am saying 
100% of our profit goes back to the local community. Um, so um, our story is this, and it's very typical of the community bank um, situation. Um, in our village, which is Clavelli, about 15 minutes from here, um, just a little seaside village um, in the eastern suburbs, uh, the local um, bank that was there, or the, the bank, the major bank that was there, closed their doors about 12 years ago. Um, had quite dire consequences for our little village. We opened our doors a couple of years after that, 10 years ago. It took us from 2002 to 2006 to reach profit, to make dollar one. In 2005, um, we were really chuffed. We gave our first cheque to a community non-profit organisation, the grand sum of 250 bucks, hard cash. We're we thought we were pretty cool um, and we turned the corner. Since then, um, since 2006, we have made cash contributions up to over $537,000 into our local community. Um, the, um, so that's community groups, sponsorships, initiatives. We employ eight local staff um, and basically we turned a dead, dying village into a vibrant community hub. Um, the first few years were a bit dry, a bit of a dry argument for our shareholders. Michael raised an interesting point. He said that Wall Street, even after indexation, compounding and all that, Wall Street over long term has returned 2.6% on the investors' money. Put your hand up if you'd like 13% return on investment. No, what he, not what he says, pure crap, BS, bewildering statements. Um, but you could get 13% fully franked return on your money, not a startup. Um, but in addition to that, that would also contribute millions of dollars into local communities. Put up your hand if you like that as a return. Ladies and gentlemen, have I got the Sydney Harbour Bridge for you? <laughs> our little bank, our little shop in Clavelli is, will be declaring a 13% dividend this year. Um, so the investors who had a dry argument you know, started in 2002, it was a dry argument for a few years, but now they're getting 13% return on their money. I reckon that's pretty cool. Um, and that's only the tip of the iceberg. Um, Bendigo community banks across Australia have employed 1,500 staff. 1,500 people have got jobs um, in villages, communities, townships where they closed banks, where, where a bank was closed down. Um, as well as that, um, the directors of local banks are voluntary and um, there's now 1,700 community bank directors that have been upskilled in, as a company director. Um, we have given about um, 20 million back to New South Wales, um, and it's about $100 million across Australia back to local communities. So that's where we're up to now. And you know, there was a big need to open banks in communities that lost their banks. Where to now? Well, I reckon we're up to about chapter three in the community bank story. Um, the gifting is good, all those numbers and all that's fantastic. Um, but now we're looking at more than community broad contributions. Um, the customers and the community and our bank have the same interest. It's building local communities. It's better for the community, better for families, for individuals, for business. So we're looking, um, we're looking for communities um, to, to determine their own future. Um, to determine their own future um, based on the partnership they have with the community bank and the street strategic alliances and bigger outcomes and bigger pictures. Um, we're stepping up our strategic advantage into what we call match funding um, from business, community and government. A few examples, um, there was a fantastic program out at uh, La Perouse area called the Cool Kids Club. Um, the government, in all their wisdom or stupidity, was going to pull the funds on that program. It was insanity. We knew there was an investor out there who, had, um, who would match dollar for dollar if someone jumped in. So what we did is we put in 50,000 bucks, he put in 50, we put the asset on the government and turned that 50 
$1,000 contribution that we put in into a $150,000 outcome for one of the best programs I've seen for young people. Um, as well as that, um, a recent one we did was Ways Youth Services. They needed a bus. We went in, Malcolm and Lucy Turnbull went in, and Variety Charity went in and made the bus a reality. So it's more than just what we're doing now is the, um, the contribution that we're making, but we're partnering with governments and business um, to yield some fantastic outcomes. Um, beyond the dollar time, uh, dollar terms we're linking um, people with um, companies like Digital Eskimo, Salvos Legal, just to get great outcomes in the community for their businesses and for individuals. Bendigo Bank, community banks have made reality town halls, swimming pools, fire brigades in communities, which is their need in the communities. So um, that's just a brief, um, brief overview of what we do. Um, we, um, we believe successful customers equals a successful um, community equals a successful bank in that order and we are into feeding into the prosperity of the communities not from it. So thank you for your time this morning. Um, thank you.